There we go again, everybody. Zach Gortz here with RevZilla. Welcome to another episode of Daily Rider. Our guest today, Yamaha's Tracer 9 GT. So very basically, that is the frame and three cylinder engine from Yamaha's MT-09, all wrapped up with a whole bunch of fresh hardware and software to make it more luxurious and more capable. Asking price, just about $15,000. It's got a lot of things that make a good Daily Rider great. So I say we find out, yeah? Buckle up. <laughs> All right, kiddos. Here we go, Tracer 9 GT. Just about ready to hit the road. Some stuff to unpack here, first of all. Um, so this is the three-cylinder uh, Yamaha engine that we've all sort of come to know and love. Um, used to be 847 cc's in this latest generation, 890 cc's via three millimeters of stroke, um, which Yamaha managed to achieve without making the uh, external dimensions of the engine any bigger. So that's kind of a neat trick. 298 millimeter rotors up front, Advix calipers. Rubber lines, pretty good brakes. We'll talk about that more as we hit the road. The saddlebags are standard. That's sort of worth talking about, I think. Um, we'll grab the key here. You can leave them unlocked, which I really like. So you hit this button, pull on it, opens up. It's got a little bungee strap, as they often do. Um, swing it, uh, latch it shut. And then if you unlock it like this, pull up on the handle, pops right off. And you get uh, a non-saddlebagged bike. Um, and a quick note, this is cushioned here, so sort of rubber mounted on the side, um, which makes them look a little flimsy sometimes rolling down the road, but you know, means all your stuff doesn't get quite as jostled. So I said the engine and the frame are the same as the MT-09, which is true. There are a couple small differences. One of the larger differences to the swing arm is uh, 2.3 inches longer on the Tracer than it is on the MT, and that's to support the saddlebags, the passenger accommodations, um, increase payload and stability, that kind of thing. Seat is adjustable to two positions. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, standard center stand. Yeah, I think that's uh, probably just about it. Oh, uh, the passenger pegs um, are not, they don't have any rubber on them. They're just bare metal. So keep that in mind as we're talking about passenger accommodations, as well as this little cutout in the saddlebag. Remember that for later when we get to Lover's Lane and we're talking about uh, uh, passenger accommodations. Oh, you fire up this big dual display here and get that engine purring. Yeah. Uh, last thing we'll check out is the headlights up here, which are kind of strange. So um, this guy here is the low beam. Uh, and this is the high beam. These are running lights, as you can see. And these guys here are actually the cornering lights. So when you lean over, uh, they illuminate as you, uh, as the IMU senses the bike leaning over. Pretty common in uh, sport touring bikes these days. And Yamaha has joined the fray. I think we're ready. Yeah. All right, we can cover some specs as we kick off the ride here. There's no claimed horsepower number, um, but it's the same basic engine that Yamaha has been producing for a while and they didn't beat their chest about uh, how much more power this 890cc version made than the 847cc version. So you can expect a little more than 100 horsepower or something like that. Uh, there is a five gallon gas tank. Um, and when that is full, the bike weighed in at 491 pounds on the scales without saddlebags. Uh, with saddlebags, it was 509. Bags are 18 pounds, nine pounds each. Uh, seat height is 31.9 inches. It can go up to 32 and a half inches, which is the spec for the MT-09. And uh, yeah, I said 15,000 bucks. It is 14,899. Everything's included. Everything you see here, I do believe. Uh, cruise control, 10 level heated grips, adjustable wind protection, Saddle bags, uh, center stand, hand guards, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff comes with GT model, which is uh, kind of nice, I think. And a quick shifter. I'm gonna quick shift, ready? Fifth, fourth, third, second. Oof. It's a good quick shifter. I know it's like, it's a little silly to show off quick shifters at this point, because they're so common in motorcycling these days, but this one's very good. I really like it. It uh, doesn't seem to matter if you're hard on the gas or you're just like politely trundling around town it's like smooth works well even with a passenger on board that's always my ultimate test of quick shifter 
if uh, if you feel the passenger getting jolted around, <laughs> the riding position discussion is nice and short on the Tracer 9 because it's just good, good start to finish. Nice sort of blend of uh, commanding and sporty, but also all day comfortable. Nice shape to the seat. It's just a great place to sit. So here we are going just about freeway speeds. Uh, and I'm gonna raise up the windshield. It raises up two inches um, over 10 steps, which I don't really see the point of that, to be honest with you. Because, I don't know, two inches is not a ton of adjustability. It's great that it adjusts and the system is awesome. Just uh, pinch it, slide it, let it go. It sticks wherever you leave it. It's very good. I guess I just wished it adjusted more. I don't. I, I feel like Yamaha is going to take it on the chin for this, and and I. This goes for just about any sport touring bike, like this. But, like, let's get some real adjustability, huh? Let's get some. Like, you put the windscreen down, and it's down. Like you, your helmet's in the wind, and then when you put it up, it's like this high, or even or even a little bit higher. I don't know. Like, maybe that's a lot harder to do than I than I realized. But, yeah, I just found myself. Where it seems like it adjusts to like not quite low enough to not quite tall enough for me. Uh, my helmet's always in the wind, so if this were my bike, I'd experiment with some aftermarket uh, windscreens. All right, now we can do a cruise control test. Always very exciting. <laughs> tap this button in the middle, turn it on. Tap set to set it, and then forget it. And you can adjust the speed up and down with the, uh, you know, up and down. Uh, it's a nice feature. Nice to see um, when it works properly. Sometimes bikes have some sort of secret handshake that you have to like figure out in order to use the cruise control. Not in this case. Nice and easy. Perhaps a little bit more interesting for you, dear viewer, will be the fuel mileage numbers. Um, so you can see down here, I have the, one of the quadrants of this right dash. For this tank of gas, it says 41.2. I found that to be a little optimistic by about um, one MPG. I've been getting 40 on this bike, which uh, is not too bad. Not too good, not too bad. It's quite a bit less than the 49 that uh, Yamaha claimed. And of course, fuel mileage you know, depends a lot on how you ride, where you ride, how fast you're going, what gear you're and all that jazz. So um, it's, it's always a little bit nebulous. But point being, um, I'll be getting 40 miles a gallon, five gallon tank. Math's pretty easy there. I hope I'm not embarrassing myself, 200 miles of range. While we're on the subject of the uh, Dash and Mahuzit here, obviously kind of a weird, it's two three and a half inch screens next to each other. Uh, so you can adjust all these uh, quadrants to any parameter you like with this thumb wheel over here on the right uh, right side of the handlebar. Um, and then the left screen is uh, the more basic information. It's uh, essentially the same setup as uh, the MT-09 with the tack across the top and um, some adjustable data down at the bottom, including heated grips and the settings menu. Uh, but yeah, of course, this bike includes some other stuff that the MT-09 does not have, such as automatic suspension. Um, it's KYB automatic suspension that um, adjusts as you ride. There are two settings, automatic one, automatic two. Two is supposed to be softer, one is supposed to be stiffer. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the twisty roads, and I'll show you how the thumb wheel works and stuff once we have a stoplight. All right, last thing we don't want to forget to talk about, mirrors, obviously. And uh, yeah, these ones are good. I like them. Good, good, uh, good shape, good height. Nice and dorky, just how I like them. Nice and smooth, too. All right, we're into the neighborhood. I'm gonna drop the windscreen down. I'm gonna hope this person doesn't pull in front of me even though their signal's not on. And we're into the stop sign challenge. See how this mamma jamma does with some footless stops. Uh. <laughs> how sketchy. I, um, I didn't, uh, didn't exactly nail the clutch feel there. My bad. We did get it though, I think. Zero MPH. Yeah, so in general around town, the, the Tracer 9 is a little top heavy. You know what I mean? It's a tall bike. Also, it's pretty light for what it is. I mean, 500 pounds isn't light for a motorcycle, um, but in the uh, world of tall sport tours, you know, the, the V-Strom 1050s, the Versus 1000s, the eh, whatever else, <laughs> KTM 890S maybe, um, you know, it's not bad the uh, weight-wise. 
Um, it's definitely gonna be easier to handle for, for tall people. And I think that uh, it goes to show, here we go, yeah, all right, three footless stops. Not the prettiest one, but they're, we're, we're getting it done here. I think it goes to show um, the approximate practical size of the vehicle that I keep the seat in the lower position um, even uh, more than six feet tall. I prefer the seat in the lower position. I think there's still plenty of leg room and uh, helps the aerodynamics be a little bit better. Last big question to address with any Yamaha triple is throttle response and how it does. Um, this Tracer has four modes of throttle map. Um, one, two, and three are all um, maximum power with different levels of response. One being the, the most kind of sporty and severe. Three being the gentlest, and then there's mode four, which cuts maximum power, actually. Um, and it's very, very gentle, sort of a rain mode kind of thing. Uh, I prefer mode two, seems pretty good. Uh, there's still a little bit of driveline lash, but not too bad. But yeah, in general, it's pretty polite around town. Pretty good, nice, uh, basic cable operated clutch and very linear engine. It's very easy to use. So yeah, not a lot of complaints as an around town bike, aside from it being a little bit tall. One thing that's a little bit weird about the quick shift on this bike is there's a little green arrow. Do you see a little? It's a tiny little green arrow next to it, and it so suggests that you upshift. So I'm going 25 miles an hour in second. I'm going to upshift to third. It's going to tell me to upshift again and again. Now I'm going 28 miles an hour in fifth gear, 29 miles an hour, and it wants me to upshift to sixth. What? Why? What's wrong with going 25 miles an hour in third gear? It's more, more, uh, rabid about fuel mileage than, than I am, for crying out loud. All right, we're approaching Lover's Lane here, but I have got an extensive passenger report, so I'm gonna dive in early. <laughs> um, overall, thumbs up for the Tracer 9 GT from Milady. She said, um, sort of more comfortable than she was expecting. Remember those cutouts I showed you in the in the saddlebag? So she initially said like, oh, I can't really put my foot where I want to put it on the foot peg. And then she was like, oh, there's a little cutout actually there. There's someone that's really thoughtful about that. And they, they did that on purpose and I appreciate that. So that was a tip of the cap that she gave to the Tracer 9 GT's passenger accommodations. Maybe not so much with the foot pegs, which are bare cast aluminum, bare metal, whereas the rider's foot pegs have rubber on them. Her notes were basically 75 miles an hour, it's fine. 80 miles an hour, the vibrations are kind of annoying. 85 miles an hour, and she'd be pretty sick of it after a little while. <laughs> a good, good score for the Tracer 9 GT from the passenger standpoint, which um, I don't know if you'd expect, but is uh, very welcome. The ride down through this set of curves here at a very gentle pace, um, but worth talking about that automatic, uh, electronically adjustable suspension again which like i said has two automatic modes um, one's supposed to be a little stiffer one's supposed to be a little softer i'm in a2 which is the softer of the two uh settings because i find it to be just a little bit more reasonable a little bit less harsh um for for putting around uh, i do appreciate that it has the a1 setting you can flick it into with the flick of this toggle up here yeah so it does get fairly stiff when you do that and if you're whipping down a back road or something like that it's fun that it that tightens itself up a little bit because obviously whether it's FZ09, MT09, FJ09 um, all those bikes were sort of um, you know lambasted a little bit for having squishy suspension so it's nice that that's an option. My problem with the electronic suspension is that it just isn't very variable. A2 and A1 settings are kind of the same I mean there you can tell the difference but it's not huge um, and also there's no manual setting whatsoever aside from preload so you can do preload in the fork preload in the shock um, and then the electronic damping controllers uh, adjust compression damping and rebound damping in the fork and just rebound in the shock so the the compression damping in the shock is not adjustable whatsoever and there's no such thing as a manual setting in either one which means you're just sort of stuck with whatever Yamaha has given you, you know, and it's, it's cycling and it's reading the road, it's semi-active. Um, but yeah, I feel like, for example, when I had a passenger on the back, I needed the all the damping I could get, all the rebound damping I could get. So I put it in A1, which is the stiffer of the two modes. Um, and it was still really bouncy and I just wanted to add more rebound damping, but I can't. And 
then the fork is kind of harsh actually. The compression damping when you hit bumps is like really sends a jolt through your wrist sometimes. So it's kind of imbalanced in my opinion and I don't have any way to adjust it except to complain to you about it, <laughs> which of course doesn't change the setting at all. So that's a very long list of complaints about the suspension, uh, but the truth is the Tracer 9 is super fun on a twisty road. It's, it's like I always say about, uh, you know, sort of these tall sport touring ADV-ish kind of bikes, it is uh, just super easy to ride, super comfortable, no weight on your hands. You can just like slam it back and forth through a set of curves. 17 inch wheels and rubber so it's very agile responds well um it's really fun um and it's annoying the suspension isn't as adjustable as i want it to be but at the end of the day the foundation at its core uh it's quite capable and uh quite a good time My only complaint about the engine, uh, I've always loved this engine, even with the crappy throttle response that it had in the original FJ09, or sorry, FZ09, um, this engine has just always been so terrific. It's so much fun. I just think that the Tracer is maybe getting a little big for the triples britches at this point. You know, you're, it's, it's layering on a lot of, uh, you know, price at 15 grand and a lot of features and a lot of weight and a lot of stuff. Um, and it's still a terrific engine and it's not that it's not fast enough, but if, 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 uh, Yamaha wants to start playing in the, in the sort of premium spotlight of the midsize adventure touring category, uh, with other brands from Europe and, um, I don't know, it's, they're going to need something that's, uh, surprising all over again, I think from uh, from an from an engine from a PowerPoint standpoint, so uh, yeah, I mean it's it is terrific. It's just maybe getting a little long in the tooth. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Off we go. Another one of the many features that the Tracer 9 GT has uh, on its resume. Uh, pulling it in front of me. Can't move over because there's a Tesla is uh, brake control, what Yamaha calls brake control, uh, which is basically um, ABS. Uh, and what they've done is basically split the capability of the motorcycle to have ABS, as we've sort of known it for a while now, uh, basic anti-lock brakes, um, slightly more lenient, and then, which is uh, brake control one, so B setting BC one. And then BC two, I believe, is, um, lean angle sensitive so the IMU uh, can tell when the bike's leaning over and uh, and sort of like ramps up the the aggression of the ABS as the bike leans over you can't shut off ABS spoiler alert for backing it in but um, but yeah I kind of I think it's interesting that that Yamaha has said you know you can have basic ABS or you can have the fancy ABS that we've designed and you can choose between the two if you want you know if you don't believe in the whole lean angle thing <laughs> I guess <laughs> right, approach the red light, we can slam on the brakes here. Good brakes. No complaints. Upgraded a little bit for this generation of M209 and Tracer. And uh, yeah, uh, I think they're pretty good. Adjustable lever too, nice. Sort of a uh, little feature. Uh, I don't know how much time we have here, but let's talk about the dash for a minute. Can you see it? It's not very bright. That's one of the things that I don't like about it. It's not bright enough. It's also kind of like pointed. It's pointed probably not bad for the camera, but for my face, I w I w it needs to be pointed up more. It's kind of pointed at my stomach or my chest. So I don't love that about it. And it's not quite bright enough, even though I turned the brightness all the way up. So um, that's kind of annoying. Uh, but I do like this little menu wheel. It's similar to, um, oh yeah, same, same piece of hardware basically as the R1. Um, and all these little quadrants over here you can see you can scroll through uh, and you can choose uh, you know this one here coolant temp I can go in there spin the wheel of destiny um, and we'll put it back on coolant temp <laughs> and then down here you can see there's a little uh, setting wheel you can go in there and uh, dive into all your settings and uh, adjust heated grips and adjust these little parameters here as well so I do like that it's very very adjustable um, you, know, you can control basically 
anything that you see on there, which is nice because why not? Uh, especially if you own this bike, you're gonna wanna mess around with that kind of thing. I think it's pretty simple, pretty intuitive, and I appreciate the Yamaha allows for the adjustability. All right. Here we go to the dirt test. And actually, I don't remember TC on. Yeah, so the TCS mode's here. This is speaking of the dash. <laughs> so you can see it says TCS mode manual. Um, if I flick this button, I can go to TCS mode two, TCS mode one. Um, those have set parameters. And the way you control that is you go into the uh, settings here and you go to manual TCS setting and then you can adjust trash control, slide control, and LIF with lift control. So that's wheelie control in Yamaha speak. If you do a long hold on the wheel, it returns to the main menu. Um, and then, what's that? If I hold this down, yeah, hold this down this way. There we go. Off. Everything off now? I think everything might be off. Let's give it a go, shall we? Find out soon enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kicking up a lot of dust. Uh, yeah, so it's not super confidence inspiring on this kind of terrain, the Tracer, as you might expect. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, fine. The, the riding position makes you feel like you could tackle something like this. And I, I would encourage you to do it. You got a campsite down the way. And if you got a jump to hit, well, here we go. <laughs> they actually handle it pretty well. Uh, I feel like the, uh, the old adjustable suspension probably ramped up the damping as we came down there. Let's rip a wheelie, shall we? alley -oop. <laughs> Oh my god. You could just do wheelies for a long time on this bike. Really long time and they will always be fun. <laughs> Terrific. Try and get it back in, shall we? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> sort of. Not really, though. Too many electronics on this bike, if you ask me. I like lean angle ABS is good. I like it. But I need, like, slide control from the R1 on this bike, really? I don't think so. All right, time for a U-turn test here in the parking lot. Uh, parking lot's kind of full here. Woo, a little tricky. All right, we're gonna line up next to this trailer here. We're gonna go as slow as we can without hitting the saddlebag on the trailer. We're gonna go to full lock. Oh God, I stalled it. <laughs> How did I get so many full stops and stalling the bike all the time? All right, here we go. Full lock. Here in yeah, two and a half, two and a half parking spaces. Nothing to ride home about. Um, I actually wish there was more steering sweep. I often say that about bikes, I suppose. G wing at the office. Look at that. Um, I often say that about bikes. Having more steering lock is good. I found it particularly noticeable on the MT09, uh, the Tracer's little sibling, because um, I don't know. That's sort of like a nice urban, urban brawler. Um, nice to have steering sweep and be able to do u-turns quickly so yeah uh, one thing about the center stand before i put it up on the center stand here uh, it does hit my boot a little bit i don't have particularly big feet but you notice there isn't a ton of leg room or foot room behind the foot peg to the uh tab for the center stand so that's sort of a small complaint but something in case you have canoes for shoes a little couple revs of the engine very 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 fun engine Lots of fun. <laughs> and speaking of lots of fun, I hope you enjoyed that uh, daily ride there, everybody. Tracer 9 GT, quite a good motorcycle, quite capable, quite a good daily rider in general. All right, time for some Instagram questions here, everybody. Uh, we're going to start with D. Roy's, who asks, uh, are the suspension issues and throttle response transmission lashes fixed or above acceptable? Good question, right? So this is the, the, the FZ09, the FJ09. There were lots of complaints about the abrupt throttle response and, the, and like a lot of lash in the drivetrain. And uh, the chain is still adjusted really tight on this bike. Um, so they're still struggling with that a little bit, I think. The advent of ride-by-wire, uh, you know, all the, all the different ride modes 
um, has the sorry not the advent the improvement of those ride modes has made a big difference and I do think it's it's gotten better and better it's not perfect but it's at least within the realm of other machines that we're used to seeing these days I, I don't think it's a problem on this bike even at this price point Next question is from Roma San, who says, uh, not even a question really, the only thing that I see is that exhaust and how flat it will be shortly after leaving the dealer. <laughs> um, so I think it's probably this exhaust dangling down behind the rear wheel, or sorry, front wheel here. Um, and that is fair. Um, and I'm not sure if this is what um, Roma San meant by this, uh, but it does kind of look like an ADV bike. But I just wanted to be clear that Yamaha specifies that this is a 100% road focused machine not supposed to be an ATV in any way, shape, or form. Um, so, you know, that that goes to any application that you were thinking about, like, oh, what's this like compared to a Tenere 700? Totally different thing, different engine, but also different style of riding that Yamaha has designed it for. All right, and then we got a question from Artabi, Artabi Egler? Artabi Egler? Artabi Egler? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that I'm butchering your name. Um, this person asks, Battle of the Middleweight Sport Tour is this or a Multi 950S or a Tiger 900 GT Pro? Good question. Yeah. Um, you know, a while back, a couple years ago, whatever, I would have said, you know, if someone had said, oh, Yamaha Tracer versus um, a Ducati Multi 950, I'd be like, no question. I mean, like, Ducati Multi 950 is just like so much more dynamic, exciting, faster, more options, more, just more everything. They're hardly in the same category. Uh, but now, you know, they, they've really stepped it up. And I think it says something that, um, that uh, our Tab Biegler <laughs> uh, considers them, you know, standing toe to toe. Um, so yeah, I haven't ridden them all back to back. I can't do a full on comparison. Um, I would say the Multi 950 feels kind of maybe a little bit more premium, a little bit kind of spicier, uh, a little bigger. Um, this one still feels, the Tracer feels kind of scrappy compared to that. Um, and the Tiger 900, yeah, is, is, is right in there too. Um, I think that the Tiger 900 dash is better. Um, it sort of depends what kind of engine character you like there. Two different triples, different filing orders, and then you got the V-twin. Uh, I'm stalling. I'm stalling. You're right. I'm stalling. Which one would I have? I'd have a Multi 950. That's what I would get. And then after that... I'd probably get this. The Tiger 900 is, is great um, for, it's probably more versatile, um, but I like the 17 inch wheels on this bike. So take that for what it's worth, I suppose. All right, that's Instagram questions. We're done with that, we're a quick round this time. Bear with me, we're gonna stick this sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard. Uh, so here we go. All right, everybody, here we are inside Revzilla West shop and the Daily Rider leaderboard. Spurgeon's there, looking over our shoulder. Everybody say hey to Spurge. Hey, buddy. Um, we got the Tracer 9 GT in the hopper, ready to go. A uh, quick bit of housekeeping. We did add some stickers to the Daily Rider leaderboard. Um, help capture some of the qualities about motorcycles that might not be reflected quite as uh, obviously in the Daily Rider rankings. So for example, um, this Yamaha RG350 has got a heart next to it. It is a lovable bike, great bike, even though it didn't finish all that well. Uh, the Kate Kalk, for example, quite expensive for what it was, so it gets a little dollar sign. Pretty easy to understand. And Dave the Jixer, uh, as an example of the um, the, the fire icon, because it uh, puts a fire in me. <laughs> Fast or, you know, whatever spicy motorcycle gets a, a little flame. So, uh, you know, as an example here, Ducati Street Fighter V4S, a little bit pricey, a little bit spicy. You get it, right? Okay. Um, Tracer 9 GT, as far as that's concerned, where do we think... It finishes. Good, solid platform. I do have some gripes about it. I'm so annoyed that helmets don't fit easier into their bags. I, I just, how, I, I did get a couple of medium sized full face helmets in the bag, but it was like, you gotta really jam it in there. And like, I don't love that. I don't love it. And I don't like the uh, automatic suspension, electronic suspension tuning very much, I think. It, they got a ways to go there. In general, though, as far as the, the, the platform, the engine, the chassis, the, the basic um, fun factor of the bike, quite good. So let's start here. Yamaha Tenere 700, the Tracer 9's sibling. Smaller, more versatile. Um, range isn't as good. Wind protection isn't as good. That's a great bike. But I'm going to give the nod to the, to the Tracer. I think it's got to be. I do. I'd, I'd yeah. Triumph Tiger 850 Sport. What do you think about that? It's very approachable. 
Um, I think the seat height is about the same as the Tracer, but uh, feel, it just feels so easy to, to swing a leg over and to ride. It's very uh, polite, but it has good character in the engine and uh, good wind protection. It's simple, cheaper than a Tracer. That was a tough one. But now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give the nod to the Tracer. I'd rather ride a Tracer day to day. It's, it's just like a little spunk here. It's luxurious in a way, it's kind of nicer. So here we go, we've arrived at the podium. Kawasaki versus 650LT. What do we think, what do we think? Tracer 9, does it have a beat? It's certainly more luxurious. It's got you know cornering lights and TFT dash and uh, a quake shifter and more power and uh, geez, it's got some stuff. Versus 650 though, pretty approachable. About the same weight probably, but I don't know. I would be sooner to recommend a versus 650 if I knew nothing about the person than the Tracer just because it's such a solid machine. The saddlebags are better on the Versus, more range, and it's got a, you know, kind of a janky dash setup, but I can always see it, <laughs> uh, unlike the Tracer 9. So there you go. There's your answer. Tracer 9 goes right here, just misses the podium spots. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, that's tough. But a great finish, a great bike, really, that Tracer 9. You can't be sad about a fourth place finish. Look at all these bikes. Board's getting full, by the way. Look at that. We're gonna have to do something about that, come to think of it. <laughs> it's gonna fill up eventually. That's for another day, though. For now, I'm gonna let you go. I'm just gonna say thank you for hanging out, watching this episode of Daily Rider. Uh, as usual, I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you next time. See you, everybody. There's a dog in the back of that pickup truck. I don't think that's legal in California. They always look so happy, though. Hmm? Not everything that makes you happy is legal. Am I right? <laughs> Off we go.